but now we are going to use the component method so that is where you have to take all the different forces and break them up into vertical and horizontal forces I'm going to start with the 10 Newton force so for the 10 Newton force you would make a little triangle that looks like that and then you would simply use trigonometry to find the horizontal and the vertical just remember that we already know the hypotenuse which is the 10 Newton so we already know that so if I had to redraw that triangle, it would look something like this. And we are going to use Sokotoa, which is our trigonometry ratios. And so let's say, for example, we're looking for x. Well, that's the adjacent, and we already have the hypotenuse. So that'll be cos. So we can say cos 40 is equal to x over 10. And then you can get x alone by multiplying 10 by cos 40. And that'll give us 7.66 newtons. And if you just look at this force, it's going to go more to the left. You can see it's pulling more to the left-hand side. So I'll just add the word left over there. Now we need to find the vertical. So the vertical is opposite the 40 degrees so that'll be sin because we're going to use opposite and hypotenuse so we can say sin 40 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse if you then get y alone that would be 10 sin 40 and if you work that out you get 6.43 to two decimal places 6.43 newtons and if you just look at this force well that's going to go up so there I've summarized the 10 Newton force at the bottom. Next, we are going to do the 8 Newton. So now the triangle that we use would be something like this over here. And I'll quickly draw it out, just that little triangle. So it goes there, there, and there. And the 8 Newton is the hypotenuse. So we can put that as 8 Newtons. Now be careful, guys. This is 20 degrees. So if you minus that from 90, then that means this little corner, which is this little corner, would be 70. Now we can use sin, cos, and tan to try to find y and x. So if we find x, that's the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so that's going to be cos. So we can say that cos 70 is equal to x over 8, and then to get x alone, you multiply the 8 and the cos 70 together. And that's 2.74 if you round it to two decimal places. And this arrow is pushing more to the right. So we're going to say right. Now we're going to do the vertical. And so that's just going to be sin. So we say sin 70 equals to y over 8. And then you would get that y is equal to 8 sin 70, which is equal to 7.52 newtons. And this arrow is pushing more upwards. All right, so I've summarized the 8 Newton force at the bottom. The next one I'm going to choose is the 6 Newton. So there's our triangle that we can make. I'll quickly draw that out for us. Where the hypotenuse is 6 Newtons, the angle is 10 degrees, and we need to find the vertical and the, well, the horizontal and the vertical. So I'm going to go a little bit faster now. It's going to end up being cos 10 equals to x over 6, but please make sure that you understand how I'm getting that. And then if you work out x, it's going to be 6 cos 10, which would be 5.91 newtons. And this arrow is going to the right. Then for the, uh, for the vertical, it would be, so we'll say that sin 10 is going to be equal to the opposite, which is y over the hypotenuse, which is 6. And then if you get the y alone, it should be 6 sin 10, which would be 1.04 and that's newtons but now this arrow is actually going more downwards can you see that so that'll be down and so there I've summarized that and then guys the 7 newton one is very easy that one does not have a left and a right it only has a 7 newton 
down. Okay, so now we have taken all four of those forces and we have broken them up into lefts, rights, ups and downs. So now what we need to do is we need to find the overall left and right and then we also need to find the overall up and down. So let's look at the left and right. I'm going to choose all the rights as positive and we'll call this Fx, meaning all the forces in the x direction. That's going to be equal to this will be a negative because it's to the left. Then this one will be a positive because it's to the right. And I chose right as positive. And then this will be a positive. So that'll be plus 5.91. And if we go work this out, we get 0, 0,99 newtons. And then if I look at the y values, I'm going to choose up as positive. Why am I choosing right and up? It doesn't matter. I'm, you can choose your own, but you will still get the same answer. So we're going to have 6.43, which is positive because it's up, plus 7.52, minus 1.0, minus the 7, which is going down. And that gives us 5.91 newtons up because we got a positive answer. So now we know the right and we know that it's going up. So it's going to go a little bit to the right and a little bit up. And so to work out the result, I'm just going to fill in these values. And then I simply use Pythagoras to find the result, which I'll call FR. And so if you use Pythagoras, it's going to go like this. It's the square root of 0 0.99 squared plus 5.91 squared and that will give us an answer of 5.99 newtons which is pretty close to the construction answer of 6 newtons that we got in number 3. Now we need to work out the angle. So here's the angle. I'm going to call that theta. And so what you can do, there's many ways to do this, is you can see that we have the opposite and we have the adjacent, so that's tan. So what I can do is I can say tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now, because we're looking for the angle, you must say shift tan on your calculator. So shift tan 5.91 over 0 0.99, and that's gonna give us 80,49 degrees. But look at how we measured that. Can you see that it's going upwards, so it's above, so it's north of this line, which is the east line. So we'll say north of east. But now, there are some of you at home who probably did it in a different way. You might have done this. You might have said it's going up, and then it's going to the right. And the up is 5.91, and the right is 0 0.99. Now, all of a sudden, your angle is over here. Can you see that? That's a little bit different and it's also correct. So you would say that your tan theta is equal to the opposite which is 0, 0.99 over the adjacent which is 5.91 and that would give you and remember to say shift that would give you 9.51 degrees but now you are measuring going like that so you are going to the right, which means east of this vertical line, which is a north line. And so that's another way you could have answered that. So can you see the similarity here? 80.49 north of east or 9.51 east of north. 9.51 and 80.49, they add up to 90. So it actually comes down to the following. It comes down to whether you are using this angle or whether you are using this angle. Both of them are correct.